What do you think the most important thing to an NBA basketball player is? No, what do you... Cha-ching, baby. What do you think the most important thing to an... How many of you think money? How many of you think it's something else? What else would it be? Winning. Winning, winning a championship? Okay. All right. Well, here's an, interesting, here's an interesting fact for you. NBA teams win 20% more games at home than they do on the road. And why is that? You know, theoretically, the court's the same, the officials are the same. Why do they win more games at home? We, what do we call it? The home? Home court, they get to sleep in their own bed, they get to, okay. So let me ask you this question. How many of the people in your workplace feel like they're playing at home or they're playing away? If you have an atmosphere where people feel like they're playing at home, it's going to be a great place to come to work. If they're playing away, people are throwing stuff at them all day. So I would just encourage you, and you do not have to be the boss for this. All of us are responsible for the environment that we work in. If you are working, if you're playing at home, everybody's going to be more productive, more cooperative, less resistant. So create that home court advantage. The people we're most likely to ignore are the people we know best. So those of you, how many of you have been married longer than five years? All right. So men, if your wife comes to you and there's two minutes left to go in the game and she sits down and says, we need to have a significant conversation. I can already tell you the quality of that interaction is not going to be great, okay? Now, here's what we do. We listen, and because we know them so well, we're, we're like, yeah, we're watching it, yeah, 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 watching the TV, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because we know them so well, we take in information and we catch a few words here and there, and our brain, a remarkable thing, it does this search because we have so much probability data, right? We have so much probability. So we're watching a game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they say, and then at some point she says, all wives say it. At some point she says what? You're not listening to me. And it, it, men, if we were smarter, if we were smarter, we would just admit to it. But what do we always say? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And then she says what? What did I say? <laughs> See? You've lived this, right? What, what did I say? So then you, your brain starts to say, the probability data. Well, I caught this word, I caught this word. And you're saying, well, what you said is, and then you use her eyes as a servo mechanism, right? So you're like, what you said is, and if her eyes get really small, you're like, wrong info, wrong info, wrong info. Okay? But the people we, we ignore most are the people we know best. This includes the people we work with. This includes the customers you interact with frequently. The other phrase is, I'll have to. Who wants to work with somebody who says, well, I'll have to get the information for you. I'll have to call accounting. I'll have to go to... How about I'd like to? I'll be happy to. Because the customer is not just hearing that. Who else is hearing it? You. You could say, I'll have to do this. I'll have to go in there. I'll have to get somewhere. I don't like my job. I hate my customers. I don't like coming to work every day. I just that. <laughs> You're also hearing this communication that goes on. So replace, and when you, when you try to do this, you're going to find out how difficult it is. Replace I'll have to with I'll be happy to. I'll be glad to. I'll find the information. And then what's the thing that we don't do that we need to do? Follow up and follow through. Follow up and follow through. Now, we need to be teaching those who deal directly with our external customers these skills. And we've just hit on some very broad, basic, general skills. But if you just start there, replace I'll have to. Don't say policy. Okay? Just a few things can make the biggest difference. I just want to tell you a quick story. A guy that I used to work for, I worked in a very large communication organization. And there was a guy that was the manager there, and everybody wanted to work for him because you knew if you came to work for this guy that you were going to get promoted through the company. But he was an interesting man because he would bring you in. He was very understated. Lots of times we think of great leaders as being charismatic. He was not. He brought you in and said, this is what I expect of you. This is how we're going to work together. 
and I'm going to give you projects to work on on your own. I'm going to help you, but when I, when I give you these projects, I expect to hold you, what's the A word again? Accountable. And he was a great guy to work for because he was what we call, I call a contagious leader, which means our goal is to get to that corner of the room. I don't care how you do it, just do it legally, under budget, and on time. All right? As opposed to a contained leader, which is the person who's going to tell you, we're going to start here, and you're going to go down this road, and then you're going to go through that road, and you're going to go through that road. You're going to do it my way. But this guy I worked for, his name was Neil, contagious leader. And every year we would always have these large conventions like this, uh, several thousand people, and we would always win these leadership awards. But things would happen with Neil. For instance, I remember once he was going to go on a second honeymoon on a cruise, and we had a big project, and he said, maybe I should stay and help you with the project. And we all said, no, no, you should go. We can take care of it. He said, no, you sure I should really stay and help you? No, no, we want you to go. Because we thought so much of him that we were willing to do whatever we had to to make sure the project came in. But here's the interesting thing. When we were winning all these awards, and they would say, this department won this award, and the leader of the department is Neil, he would always send one of us up to accept the award. He would send one of us up to accept the award. He took less of the credit and more of the blame. But what happened? We would go up there, and what did we say? It was a great worker for Neil. He's such a good guy. We can't, we can't believe it. So did he need to be up there talking about himself? No, because who was going to be talking about him? So if I tell you how great someone is, is it better if, some, if you get it from a third party or directly from the individual? So just think about that. And my hope for you is that you're e either able to work for someone like this throughout your career or that you'll be someone like this, whether you're in that titled leadership position or not. Be that person that someone will be standing in front of a group like this someday saying, you know, I worked for this person once, or I worked with this person once, and it was an unbelievable experience. Remember, purpose. Working at the purpose level.